So in this video, I'm going to cover five steps to toning up. Um, a lot of people come to the gym and say, I want to lose weight and tone up. And it's actually not an actual physical thing you can actually tangibly like, track. It's toning up. People know what it is, but you don't exactly know what it is, if that makes sense. But my, my theory in terms of toning up is losing weight is pretty simple. You're losing weight on the scale. But toning up, I think, is just the way you feel. You know, um, you know, you know your arms, your belly, your, your thighs, your shape. Your clothes feel better, looser. Um, you feel more comfortable, confident within. And you just know you feel a bit better internally you know you're a bit more defined and your shape's changed. And that's what I gauge is toning up or maybe improving or maintaining lean muscle mass. Because a, a problem people make is when they lose weight is they're hell bent on losing weight, but all they do is essentially lose muscle mass and they lose all the muscle because they're not training, they're not weight training and they're under fueling their body and the output's really high. And that's what happens sometimes you just, you, People say you've lost weight, but essentially you've just come, become a smaller version of yourself because you've lost a lot of muscle. And it's, it's almost a two-step process. This. If you want to lose weight and tone up, you probably do need to lose weight first and then look at you know, getting stronger tone and putting on lean muscle tissue or tone up. Um, but things to think about when you do want to tone up and you, you do, want to, do want to change shape, and you're not hell-bent on the weight and the, the, the number and the scale. Because reality is, guys, is you cannot lose weight forever. And people are, are something's either in the mindset where you want, you want to lose weight and you're being good or it's, or it's not at all, it's all or nothing. So it's all or nothing. I'm losing weight or I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm losing weight, I'm not, you're start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Continuous cycle, there's never a middle of the ground which you can actually maintain over the longer term. And the reality is you can never lose weight forever. That's where slimming clubs, that's where restrictive diets, that's where um, one, methodology, one methodology diets like you know, Atkins, like um, paleo, don't always work because you can't get do, do that forever. It's like training the same way forever. Your body gets bored, the stimulus never changes, and you, you're bored, you bur get burnt out, you get tired of it, and you stop. And stopping is the worst thing you can do. Because with anything, with fitness, with diet, with anything like that, health, lifestyle related, is just don't stop. Just do what you said you'd do, and don't stop, and chances are you'll make more progress than overthinking anything else. But here's some things to think about. It's training, training, you obviously need to train, whether it's cardio, where that's um, you know, faster, shorter burst cardio, where it's longer walks, longer cycles, longer runs, and uh, strength training, you know, and always, not only training guys, but training with intent and intensity. You know, so if you want to get better results, you need to get better. Sometimes your best is not always the same on day one of a program compared to day 90, compared to day you know, six months and one year in, because your perception of hard, your I guess your baseline strength, your baseline cardio will improve over time. So your mentality is something's going to work it is, yes, some days when you're stressed, when you're tired, just doing the workout is enough. Just getting through the doors enough. Just getting something done is better than nothing. That is one scenario. But if you're coming into a workout, feeling good, ready to change, want to do your best, then you've got to do it with intent. You know, if you're used to losing, using that 12, 16 kilogram kettlebell, then push yourself up to that 20, 24 kilogram kettlebell. If you're used to work at doing 200 meters on the rower per minute, try and push to do 225 per minute on the rower. And then just, you're always moving the needle. You're always getting better. You're not doing a massive amount different, but you're doing a lot different at the same time. It's gonna move, move the needle a lot over a long period of time by doing this. The next one's protein. Just like your training, you've got to progressively overload you know, your, your protein, you know, if you're training, if you're doing weighted work, if you want to get stronger, if you want to get, you know, build that lean muscle tissue, then you need to move the needle with weights. You need to shift them faster or shift them heavier. Okay, with protein, uh, usually people don't eat enough protein, so a good thing to do is keep adding more protein to your snacks and to your meals. Keep adding veg into protein to your meals because you'll, get, you'll be fuller for longer, you'll re recover faster, and you'll be better for it. Next one's carbohydrates. Now, when you do, especially your strength work, you use glycogen, store carbs, and they come from, come, this comes from carbohydrates. So if you want to tone up, so to speak, if you want to get stronger, or um, maybe if you even want to put on a lot of muscle mass, then you need to keep carbohydrates up. People cut carbs, there's no energy to work with, there's nowhere to go. You can't work intensely, you can't shift that weight because there's no fuel to work on. So you still need carbohydrates, guys, and that means you can still eat bread. Okay, the next one is overall calories. Pretty simple, covering a lot of videos. You've got to have, have an awareness of what your, I guess, your metabolic rate is, what your body 
burns in a day if you don't do anything, and you've got to have a recommended calorie intake, just like an upper limit and lower limit, an ideal scenario, a not so ideal scenario. You've got to have an idea of what your calorie range should be in a day over a week. So if you know, if I eat, if I'm a guy, I'm 200 pounds, if I eat 2,000 calories a day, seven days a week, every day of the month, I can guarantee I'll probably have lost weight if I can add a bit of exercise into that, because you're burning more than you're taking in. The next one is R&R, &R, a bit of rest and relaxation now. Somebody, I once heard call this is invisible training. And people find this difficult because there's no instant gratification. You don't have that instant soreness, you don't have that instant impact, that instant um, endorphin release from the training. But it's almost like, it almost moves the needle more than training sometimes because sometimes your body needs the rest. Some, sometimes your, your biggest changes comes through rest, your biggest adaptation to your body comes through rest and relaxation and just going for a walk some days. It doesn't always have to be intense, heavy weights. You know, the more and more I do, the more and more I get. You know, that doesn't, life and your body doesn't always work like that. You know, because so sleep, active rest, mobility work, yoga, Pilates. Yes, you're still moving, but you're not moving maybe at the same intensity as you would normally. 